Got the volume set properly. Got the uh, the old audio recording. And we're queued up and ready to go. All right, Brian, read along with me, won't you? As we begin I will. the show. And oh. <laughs> so I can't complain. Oh, that's awesome. That I'm sorry, Liam sent me a thing. That's awesome. Now that they're making seven point six million dollars on their Kickstarter. Right. All right. Good lord. Um, all right. Here goes. It starts in is that recording? Yeah. In three. No, no, come on, come on, come on. There we go. <laughs> It wasn't recording. All right. In three, two, one. Coming up on TMS. It's homecoming. Goats ruin everything. Have you tried burp therapy? Actors are not the same people or something. I think she might be faking it. Therapy Thursday and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. Because a good night's sleep on a Sealy Posturepedic mattress can help ease the stress of the day, you'll experience your best after you experience Sealy Posturepedic. You'll have to eat four bowls of Raisin Bran. This is The Morning Stream. Exercising demons since 2012. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Morning Streams. TMS uh, six one thousand six hundred and seventy <laughs> for <laughs> for Thursday, March fourteenth, twenty nineteen. It's halfway through the, the new, month. The new number. Yep. The new number. Yep. <laughs> Hey, uh, we're a month away from tax day. Oh, jeez. Which is two weeks, so it's and, and a month and two weeks away from Vegas day. Right. It's all yeah, coming. Let me think fast. about that instead of tax day. Look at it all just coming at us like bullets out of nowhere. Woo! Time, yeah, time I is know. passing. It is. It's totally flying. Like it's totally. Uh, I can't believe mid March, and uh, still, still waiting to hear back on something. Mm. Mr. Flaylin, man. Everything uh, goes. Everything goes slow. No, it does. I it swear is. to God, Vegas operates at a whole different speed mm -hmm. than um, than the rest of the country. I mean, when you're there, everything's lickety split. Let's go. It really is. Bing, bang, yeah. boom. Boy, behind the scenes. And yeah. this is funny because this happened with uh, last year. This happened with um, the, the cover of a 500 concert. It's mm -hmm. a lot of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds great. All right, cool. I'll get back to you. Yeah, crickets. crickets. You know, and yeah. it's like, oh, no, this is the way we, this is the speed we operate here. It's mm -hmm. totally cool. Mm -hmm. Nice and chill. Nobody... Don't like it. I don't like it, sir. <laughs> no. I like a snappier response from my I uh, do. I do. My planning as well. Well, uh, all praise uh, my wife. She's home. She got home last Yay! night at about midnight, which kind of sucks because she had to drive in the snow, but it was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, she got here. She's uh, here. It's good. We can get back to some normalcy around here. Pretty funny thing happened, though. She took my daughter to the train this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. It's snowing, so, you know, perfect day to drive her up there to the train. <laughs> Carter walks into the train, got the big door yeah. open, you know. It's a nice, yeah. you've been on tracks. It's a nice transit system thing. Uh, I think you've been on it. Haven't you been on it downtown or something? I have been on the okay. tracks, yeah. Tristan, that, like, uh, the year of the dark night. Uh, Ooh, 2000 ought eight. That's right. Tristan and I, when we came down for the... One of the first Nerdtaculars we came to, maybe even the first. I think it was your first. Yeah, um, it's the first for a lot of people uh, that year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That we took we took the tracks. Yeah, and uh, it's nice. It's a nice little uh, unit there. She gets in, big open door. There's the driver uh -huh. looking at her, smiling. Uh -huh. Carter walks <laughs> yeah. in and goes, "Oh shoot, I forgot to uh, I forgot to swipe my card." She goes, "That's okay. Just turn around and swipe it." Turns around, goes to the little post. It's like a little post with an electronic swiper on it. Yeah. Turns around to the post, goes to swipe it, hand in the air, door shuts behind her, on her Train head drives off. on her headphones. Yeah. And <gasps> drives off without her with her headphones. Seriously? Leave, yeah. Like the driver even told her to do this, and so her headphones came off and yes. she lost those? She lost her little earbuds and she didn't get on the she had to wait around for the next train. Oh my god. I know. Now the only thing I can think of is the driver maybe it's automated and they don't have much control over this. I don't know. <laughs> Or they're total jackasses. Yeah. That uh, seems like the meanest thing that you could do to somebody. I can't imagine uh, I can't imagine doing that, right? Well, like, oh, you forgot she... to swipe? No problem. Just turn around and swipe. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Sucker! Sucker! Yeah. 
It's pretty funny though. When they called me and told me and they were laughing with How did her how did her headphones I have get no, that far separated that the door could close on No idea. No idea. Oh and she's like she's like, Oh, they're gonna get to work before I do. I'm like, No, they're gonna get to the next stop and then fall out and then some dude's gonna get them. Someone's gonna get some free earbuds. Right. Ugh. Yeah, that's well not, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, maybe. Free earbuds. You know, but that's all right. Tw- tweaked audio uh, will replace it for fr- Oh, that's a oh. long callback. <laughs> That's, Plus a these really are, long, that's a really long callback. These are her cheap Chinese knockoff uh, iPhone uh, pack-in earbuds. So these are the, like they look just oh. like the real thing, but they're just like cheap knockoff Chinese ones that we got. We oh, got, gotcha. Okay, well, good. Then that's that's not so bad. Yeah, we got like a stack of those for ten bucks for like eight of them. They're, they're stupid yeah. cheap, but they're also not great. But they get the job done, and now they're gone. So there you go. Well. Yep. Time for her to invest in a pair of AirPods. Kay Katsumi says taxi or tracks drivers are often a holes. Really? So I've not, that's unusual to hear that because I've had some who see you running and then go, oh, stop. And they'll stop the train and let you on. Like, there's some nice ones. Maybe they get fired and bring in the jerks again. I don't know what's up with that. But yeah. uh, anyway, it's kind Jeez. of a weird morning. Uh, so that all went down. And we had no towels. So Nick and I both came out of the shower <laughs> with no towels. <laughs> because because that gives the only person who can uh, do laundry in your house? Yeah, I mean, you'd think. But um, while she was gone, we just sort of forgot to do it. And there was yeah. a lot of it. And so we just didn't do it. So anyway. It is well, what I, it I is. say that, but uh, when Tina's gone, I pretty much, you know, I don't I do not do laundry when Tina's gone either. Oh. I do dishes. Oh, good. Do a lot of stuff. Do trash, do recycling, do all that stuff mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Here's the whole thing with laundry for me. Yeah. Tina's gonna laugh when she hears this, but I just don't want to screw something up. Mm. Like, I don't. I'm not. I'm not worried about screwing up the trash by taking it out. Right, you know, I won't. Right. I won't mess that up. Right. I won't um, mess up the dishes by washing them because guess what? They all go in the same dishwasher. They all use the same detergent. Mm-hmm. It's all the same temperature in the dishwasher. Everything gets washed. I pull it out, put it away. Boom, we're done. Right. You're not gonna. But but, but if you got like some fancy sweater that needs special treatment. Right. It's yeah. it's like uh cold, hot, warm, uh yep. dryer, dryer sheet, what uh mm-hmm. what's the deal? Does this red shirt go well with these white socks? Hmm, that's oh a bad God. idea. There's so many people in the chat room that are rolling their eyes at me, so that's fine, I'm fine, whatever. Uh No, I'm with you, dude. I don't want to <laughs> screw it up. What what's worse? You it's better to not have done it than to screw it up. Jeannie and Samantha Jane are there basically with their arms folded. Looking at each other like, uh huh, mm-hmm. right? See, just lazy. That's what he is. Now, That's towels. Totally what they're doing right I, there. I admit, towels, not a problem. I could have done towels. But I'm totally <laughs> with Brian on this. If you've got some shirt that only Kim wears at a certain occasion or something, and it says yeah. on the back, only wash with a pinky up and freaking four pounds of cheese, whatever it is, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just putting it in with a thing and saying, go for it. And and hopefully these socks I'm putting in with it are okay to go with it. Like, uh, yeah. And Sam says Randy does great laundry. I don't doubt it. Did I ever tell you about the time that I was a... Uh, <laughs> I did great laundry. Laundromat owner in Chinatown. <laughs> and we, we used Calgon and we used to keep it hidden in the back. Until one customer came in one day and said, uh, we need more Calgon, and just that like kind a, of blew our ancient Chinese secret. Yeah, just like a night at uh, Saturday night at Ibbett's house. <laughs> just, like, just like a Saturday night at Ibbett's house. Exactly. Well, anyway, it's all good now. She's home. Everything's fine. Not going to worry about it anymore. What's going on in yeah. your world? What's happening with you? My world, uh, you know, I just, uh, one quick thing. I want to, well, number one, my world is white. It's mm. a white world out there right now. Mm, mine too. Uh, racist. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, but really, we didn't get hit by a bomb diggity cyclone smash attack, whatever it was, uh, as bad as other parts of Denver. We were kind of in that, that on the western slope, so there was a warm air front column of triangular lines attached with a stripe. Mm. <laughs> something like that why, anyway why aren't you the get... local meteorologist in denver why aren't you i know it? right why have they not hired me to do that i don't get it um but uh we probably got maybe six inches over here hardly anything in other parts of the town are are buried um they have not repeat not picked up our trash trash yet they have not delivered our mail oh. apparently it's too frightening hold on is that a is that normally a wednesday gig for the trash yeah, wednesday's trash yeah, yeah wednesday's usually trash and they haven't picked it up weird they have not picked it up i'm looking there at uh 
my bin, one side of which is white because the snow went horizontal. Mm. It may not have may not have been a lot of it, but it was very impressive the directions it went when it was here. Oh yeah, that cyclone. Yeah, it's uh, it's nasty business, and there are parts of this country that are like uh, having a rough time this morning. So we hope oh, you yeah. guys are all yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, other the uh, the road Pena Boulevard, which is the road that connects um, the airport to I seventy is littered it is a it is called a car graveyard right now according to a couple new different newscasts it's a car graveyard here on peña boulevard as, oh, that's awful. as uh, passengers just got out and abandoned their vehicles i don't know where they went yeah because there's nothing nearby that's that's awful that's yeah. terrible i don't want my car in a place where it's just going to sit there until things thaw out that sucks right. oh my god headed sucks. to the nearest wampa cave where they're suspended upside down uh waiting to to try and reach their lightsabers sure to, yeah to get out they're of gonna there. have to pick a leader or something they have their own little society right. in there it's bad exactly. news exactly uh but i do want to give a quick shout out um we get a lot of requests here for music uh for for the end of show covers um Chris sent in one for yesterday's show. I was thinking, oh, I'll get to it today, and I've got ones already set up for today and tomorrow. So I will get to yours Monday, but you just turned 40. Happy birthday, Chris, and uh, look for a Queen cover uh, at the beginning of next week. Oh, very nice. 40 is a good year. I like that year. 40 is a good year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone told me that was going to be, oh, that's your over the hill thing. I'm like, well, it, no. Once upon a time, it was, you know. Uh, for our too. grandparents or or great grandparents, like forty was considered. Uh, oh yeah, you've, you're you're past your prime. You're out of your usefulness period. Mm-hmm. That's right. Someday there will be a store called Walmart, and the only job you're going to be able to get is standing in the front telling people where housewares is. <laughs> if you're lucky, now that they're taking that away in a lot of places, but. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, 40 is, uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, I thought 30 was a big deal. And that was fine. Right. 40 was a big deal. That was fine. Probably the same thing will happen with 50. I don't know. I think so. As long as people keep saying the phrase, blank is the new 40, and it keeps moving along with my age. Oh, oh right. 50 is the new 40, Brian. You're going to love it. Oh, 60 is the new 40, Brian. It's yeah. going to be great. Yeah, they do do that. They used to say, go get your colonoscopy at 40. You have to do it. And then about right. the time I turned 40, they said, ah, you don't have to do it till you're 50 now. I was like, sweet. Right. Right. I had to do it when I was 45 anyway, but still. You did. And I don't yeah, actually have to do it. Guy on Twitter live. I know. And I don't have to go till I'm 55 now because they said nice. uh, I got a good 10 years. So in theory, Brian mm-hmm. in the next f- couple of years has got to go in. Yeah. In the next, uh, well, I'm turning 50 in August. So yeah. the next six months probably is is uh, when I need to are start you, taking care of that business. Are you going to do it? Are you going to go in there? Have that of course, done. yeah. All right, you're going to let Tina record it and then bring the audio for the show? Uh, nope, if there's one Damn thing it. I've learned. <laughs> Damn it. I want to hear what truths come out of Brian while he's inebriated in such yeah. a state. I want to know. I really think the world is flat. <laughs> <laughs> I just am afraid to tell anybody. I knew it. I knew it. This whole time, Brian was a, Brian was a flat earther. Hey, there's a documentary. A hoax. <laughs> there's, a, there's a documentary on Netflix about flat earthers. I want to watch this. I so know bad. somebody uh, on Twitter pointed us to that, and I do want to watch it. Oh, yeah. I want to watch that. That sounds so great. Is it just going to be? Am I going to be able to just mock these people for their dumb idea, or is it going to be? It's not taking it seriously. I hope. Well, what's funny is, um, according to the guy's tweet, and I, I'm trying to scroll back and find. I'm never going to find it because it's way back there. But I added the I added the movie to my. Um, my list yeah. but the uh, uh he said that uh even among the flat earthers mm. there's like people go man that guy look that guy's ideas are really out there mm. was, that guy's kind of wackadoodle over there mm. it's like okay so so we're all in this little once you cross the line of saying oh the earth is flat isn't that isn't that all kind of like oh you believe that too great I I don't care what else you believe because I'm I'm on board with that yeah infighting yeah. inside of that community is is funny to me I guess that's true of everything like you get closer to the to the source of whatever you're into and then you're gonna find dissent so I guess that makes sense but if this documentary goes through that oh man I'll I will revel in flat earther infighting that's awesome yes. I want to yes. see them break apart from the inside. I just, I'm just visualizing what they must think. If you're looking at, at uh, Earth from space, I mean, it just looks like the the thing that the Krypton criminals are trapped in. Just like this <laughs> like flat <laughs> flat thing like gyrating in space. Yeah, with Terrence Stamp going, 
I guess. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yes. Yeah. I, uh, Negative I, zone or whatever it is, yeah. Part of the reason I want to watch it is I've actually never really listened to anyone who's a true believer talk about it. I just yeah. I just kind of know it from a distance, and so this will be... Look, I'm trying to expand my, my horizons, guys. I'm actually willing to listen to these people and see what they say, but man, I am so ready to pop off on it, though. Er, yeah. Flatter. Do they think it's... Do they think it's rectangular? I don't in, know. In shape, like uh, let's say it's it's two dimensional, you know, square deal. Is it square, or do they think it's circular, like a right, like a record, like, oh, like a record, a, baby, like a, like a disc, <laughs> right round, right round. Yeah, spin it right round. Is it like a disc, maybe? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Rifi says they think it's a dome. So it's a half. Oh, they think it's like a. That we're in a dome. That we're in a dome. Okay. That's also dumb because that's just them explaining away the curvature that they can easily witness from various sources. <laughs> so I think it's a, a half sphere. We're not fully on board with a full sphere, but hold on. If you drive, but but if you fly halfway across the world, you should get to the end of your dome. If well, you uh, these people, the, dude. But the airlines are in with the government, Scott, and they knock you out, knock the passengers out to Great. make them think that they're. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like these Boeing Boeing's um, airplanes going down were nothing except uh, flat earthers were start or, uh, round earthers were starting to see the truth, so they crashed those planes or something. Like I hate right. these conspiracies. I hate them. I hate them. I hate well, them. what's what's great about it is uh, that it doesn't take into take into consideration that, like me and the laundry, the world is lazy, <laughs> and the easiest thing would be just to have a round world as opposed to all this effort that it must take the government to have have uh edge of the earth border security to keep people doped up enough to where they don't realize that you know that there's an edge to the world right it's like uh yeah there's so much effort that would be involved in that and guess what they're as lazy as me mm. <laughs> i'm too world. lazy i'll just watch a documentary about it i don't want to do anything yeah exactly uh chat room uh, can someone remind me the name of this documentary do you remember the name of it so we can just I don't. So whoever we're, so people know what we're actually talking about, you can go watch it. I think it's like uh uh I'll find it. It's flat, stupid. No, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what it's called. It, yeah. uh, it's, uh, magnets, it's exactly how right. do they work? Behind the curve? Is that Behind it? the curve. Oh jeez. Just the name alone's irritating me. <laughs> I'm making sure that that is it. Be uh, beyond the curve? Behind the curve? Yes. Yes, behind the curve. Okay. Meet the growing worldwide community of theorists who defend the belief that the Earth is flat while living in a society who vehemently rejects it. Uh-huh. Does it say anything about... Under the, the J.C. Calhoun, Calhoun, under the dome. Yeah. No, well, that's hilarious, but that's that dumb. <laughs> oh, I wish that was it. I like that book. Yeah. I read that book. I didn't like the TV show, but the book was great. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's flat, stupid. That's an awesome name. <laughs> that should be it. Uh, it. Should at least be a show title. <laughs> I'm gonna watch that because I'm willing to at least. Oh, entertain their side. Oh, yes. sure. Yeah, yeah entertain is the key word there. I want to be entertained right. by this, and I want someone to accidentally <laughs> say, "Well, we're the fastest uh, growing group globally." I want someone to say "globally" by accident, multiple times. Okay. I want people to say around the world and i want them to say globally what else can they say in this documentary yes. right, right, right. Uh, from sea to the sea to shining sea sure uh, no, that, that might work, that work maybe uh, from equator to, or from the north to the south pole something <laughs> like i need them to do more of that and then i'm in right. i'm all in all right <laughs> oh and the chat room asked for this so here you go that guy on twitter lied that's going to be brian in like a year that's me. Yeah. So, what Great. will you say? You're gonna say, uh, "I'll have that done in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay." Ah, oh, fantastic! They have colonoscopies. Right next, the, right next to the glass enclosed tattoo parlor is a colonoscopy center, and I'll just have it done there. Yeah, I think uh, that sounds like a great idea. I'm trying to find more of these, but I don't know where they where they went. I've lost them. I think that anesthesiologist was hitting on me. She's really ah! pretty. Oh, that's not it at all. Yeah, that's not it. Please. No, gosh, dang it. I can't find all the rest. They're in here somewhere. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> that was that was me before. I'm oh, sorry. that was sorry. That was audio. Sorry. That wasn't. Uh, sorry. Gotcha. Sorry. It's my new. It's my new track. I'm sorry. putting together. Sorry. 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 It's called sorry. 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 I just need a beat though. It's too late to say sorry. Yes, it is. Hey, is it bad that I kind of I kind of like that album? Is that bad? Is, is that the Justin Bieber thing? Yeah. Is that bad? Yeah, it is. It is, it is bad, Scott. Is it bad that I kind of like it? I don't want to look. 
I'm not trying to. I, I realize that it's easy to, to shame things and all that, but for some reason, I can listen to that song and kind of like it. I don't. I know. mean, I'm willing to. I'm willing to get on board with the uh, the um, Miley Cyrus album. Oh, what was the one? <laughs> uh, blank. Bl- uh, <laughs> I keep wanting to call Braziers, but it's not Braziers or Brazzers. Uh, Braziers. Uh, Blankenship. Uh, f- uh, Fellatio Town. What is it? It's um. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that was a <laughs> that was a weird place to go with a ah. album title. Guess. Why can't I think of it? Bla- <laughs> bla- bla- I wish there's no chance that that will be the show title. Oh but no, it won't win, but you can put it in there. If it, you it's going to get a lot of votes. Oh, bangers, uh, bangers, bangers. That's it. Yeah, it's like- yeah. I was on board with you liking the bangers album. I'm not sure how I feel about about the. Uh, I don't know. The Justin Bieber. There's some of, something about it. I can't put my finger on it. That sorry song has got something in there that it's that's that I find uh, earwormy and fun to there's, listen to. There's some musicians that I can separate the people from the music. Yeah. Uh, Justin Bieber's not one of them. Can't do I can't, that one. Mm. I can't do that one. All right. I keep I keep seeing like him doing his little heart thing and <laughs> just want to <laughs> just want to pour up. A cauldron of molten uh, gold on his head. I didn't realize Justin Bieber was such kryptonite for you. I had no idea. He really is. Yeah. yeah. So when you when yeah. you you're never gonna do like if he has a birthday, you're not gonna do like a Coverville tribute thing or anything. Um, it actually came up recently. Hmm. His fourteenth uh, birthday or whatever he's at. Uh, <laughs> I think he's like thirty. Didn't he turn thirty? I don't know what he is. I mean, he's you know. Let's pull it up because it was recent, and I actually did look to see what I had, and I've. Um, I think I have <laughs> 25. Sorry, 25. That's all. The 25. Other. He just turned 25. Yeah. That was the deal. Yeah, he's uh, all grown up now. Yep, that would have been an episode. Uh, oh yeah, that would have been right around the time I did. Uh, Roger Daltrey, the Who, who mm. was born exactly 50 years earlier mm. to the day. Mm. Uh, he turned 50 when Justin Bieber was born. Wow. Uh. Yeah, so that uh, make him. That, that's the one I'll celebrate. I'll celebrate Roger Daltrey and his. Uh, that make him seventy five. Yeah, that makes him seventy five. He's exactly seventy five. So that episode I did on March fourth was uh, the Who and Towns Van Zandt, and uh, would it, it could have it could it have included Justin Bieber? Mm-hmm. Sure, it could have. All right, but it, there's yeah. How do you feel about here? Let me look at this real quick here. Oh, he's married right. now to that Haley. Uh, Haley S- uh, Baldwin or, or no, Baldwin, Haley. isn't it? Oh. Isn't it, is he really? Yeah, didn't they? Isn't that uh, what's his name? Baldwin's daughter. He yelled out on the phone that one time. Yeah, yeah. Alec Baldwin's daughter. Yeah, they're married now. That must be a fun. Listen, you ungrateful turd. <laughs> I'm Jack Donaghy. <laughs> Listen, you little shit. When Kelly you come Baldwin. to when you yes. come to Thanksgiving this year, you're gonna have your own card table to yourself, you little brat. Right. Uh, somebody sent uh, because we did this uh, Dave Grawl episode of soundography recently or this mm-hmm. uh, uh foo fighters yep. episode of soundography somebody sent me a link to like one of those memes and the top of it is justin bieber coming out to his concert saying hey uh just want to say a quick message to all my fans i'm sorry but i'm not going to perform tonight because i have a cold and i don't want to hurt myself really and then underneath it is a photo of um dave grawl when he broke his leg jumping off a monitor on stage during a Foo Fighters concert and actually had his leg put in a cast while he had his guitar and was playing another song. Yeah, because Dave Grohl's a badass and takes no prisoners. Dave Grohl is a badass. Yeah. Uh, there's a... My my most horrific memory of Justin Bieber in recent years was back in 2016, I want to say. Mm-hmm. He was... Or maybe it was earlier. May have been tw- earlier than that. But anyway, he claimed he got some bad milk and he got on stage and was performing and about halfway through the performance just yacked all over the stage that's right i forgot about that yeah Yeah. just all over the place right in front of everybody that must have been embarrassing that's right a a quick correction thank you jackalope ashley uh hayley baldwin is stephen baldwin's daughter not alex oh not alex so it's not the not the daughter that alec yelled at but the daughter of the guy who somehow made usual suspects among a field of garbage Mm. (laughs) So, now, so wait, he's the so jerk one. He's the dick one, isn't he? The one that's such an a hole. Oh yeah. man, now, seriously, now I'm worried about Justin Bieber. I'm worried about him. Mm-hmm. All right, well I'm gonna 
I am going to unabashedly enjoy "Sorry" when I hear it next, and I'm not going to feel right, shame. Be my guest. You know what? And and what? How how can I talk when I'm a big uh, Spice Girls fan? You know, mm. there's oh yeah. See, I can always bring that up. You can always bring that. Like, all right, oh oh, Brian doesn't like Justin Bieber, but he likes the Spice Girls. Okay, mm-hmm. I guess his. Uh, those guys you know, coming, they, pop. they doing some kind of reunion deal? What's going on with them? There has been talk of it, but it has not um, solidified mm. in anything uh, anything tangible. Well, heard, anything I, that I can book it, buy a ticket for. I heard that uh, Soccer Wife's not so into it, right? She doesn't want to do it. What's Which her is name? fine with me. Can't yeah. think of her name. Posh. Posh Spice, yeah. Yes, uh, Beckham, Victoria Beckham. Victoria I'm all right Beckham. with that because... Um, Listen, when you when you go back and you listen to songs like uh, To Become One or uh, Say You'll Be There, uh, you can pick out the parts where Victoria is singing, and it's not that good. It's kind of covered up a mm, little bit. Mm. Yeah, she was never known for being the one. Uh, no. Chat room no. says they're coming to Bristol soon. Maybe Terps will go. How about this? Uh, can you yeah. tell me, Can you before we move on to the news, can you even tell sure. me what a zig a zig ah is? When she says she really, really wants to zig a zig ah, what does that yeah. mean? What does it yeah. mean? Uh, it's uh, biscuit making. Oh. Uh, she wants to make biscuits because um, apparently Jerry Hollywell makes some killer uh, white pork gravy and it's amazing. And so they say, oh, we want a zig a zig ah. We just want to make some biscuits. Is that really a true thing? Gravy? She makes really good. Uh... No, I'm oh. making all that up. That sounds so good right now. <laughs> Biscuits and gravy, yeah, it does. I would lick yeah. that off someone's hairy leg. I'm so into it right now. That sounds so good to me. Wow. Yeah. You ever have a thing that sounds so good you would eat it under really duressful uh, circumstances? No, not that. Not <laughs> certainly not to that degree, Scott. I can't imagine any. Well, what if it was a clean that I'd like want to eat off of somebody's hairy leg? What if it was somebody's clean hairy leg, recently showered, scrubbed hairy leg, and it was just oh the best. It was the best pork gravy you're ever gonna have in your life. You're never gonna have All better right, gravy okay. than that. Are we? Could we? If we say that it's uh, Charlize Theron has not shaved her legs in a while, <laughs> and she's letting me have some biscuits and gravy off of her leg. Fair enough. Okay. I'm alright. I think I would be okay with that. Yeah, I think I would be too. If it was. Um... <laughs> this, wow. <laughs> and I thought, uh, and I thought, Felatio Town was kind of the darkest place we could go in our pre-show stuff. Was All it right. Felatio Town? Felatio Town. It's Felatio yeah. Town. Yeah. What if, uh, okay, here's a, here's one for you. Now you've got me thinking about it. <laughs> if you, I like this has turned into a, how, <laughs> how far would you go? All, All right, right. If All right, you knew it. that there was a bag of enough gold that if you cashed it out, it would be worth, um, let's say, $100 million. Okay. That's too much. $20 million. Okay. $20 million worth of gold. <laughs> And it's Anything in a, over five million is all the same color to me. It's well, just like, oh, all right, yeah. Yeah, you'll never spend it all. But anyway, so you got like a, you get this, this little pouch full of that much gold, worth that much. The uh-huh. trick is the only way you can get it is you have to go to a morgue, and in the morgue you have to dig through twenty different corpses via the anus. To find the bag, because you're told it's in the colon of these dead pe- of these twenty dead people. What, it's, it's like uh, this is the the this is the weirdest uh, Guy Fieri competition show ever created. And this is this is the newest game on Ellen DeGeneres' Game of Games. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an app soon. To go to a morgue. Yeah, I can't wait right, till it's so an app. All right, so I've wait, got, there's more to I've it. Got rubber gloves. No, no, no. See, gloves. this is this is the trick. No rubber gloves. This is bare hands and a spoon. You get one spoon and bare hands. <laughs> No gloves. You can't cover yeah, I'm your. Not, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not put off by dead people. You would uh, totally do this. Yeah, I totally do that. That's. You'd walk around, flop that guy over. All right, where we got? Oh, okay, there it is. Get in for, there and dig around. For twenty million, sure. For twenty for for a mysterious package of gold. <laughs> <laughs> of twenty million dollars of gold, yes. I uh, think I'd, I think I'd be alright with that. I think I would force myself to do it, but it'd be rough. It'd be a hard day. All right. I don't know why that came out. But <laughs> this is really... Very odd. Very odd. Let's do something even more odd, and that is the news. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. Hey, look, it's the news, and it's brought to you by... By the way, if we sold any Twitch subscriptions during that thing, during that, during that last discussion, 
uh, whoever bought them needs to be put on the no-fly list. Yeah, I'm or just who, gonna say that. Yeah, or who wouldn't want to be notified? Like, even if you just followed, who wouldn't want to be notified the next time oh. we go on the air after that conversation? <laughs> right, exactly. I would. Hey, are you looking for a fresh new show with a couple who doesn't hate each other? Point your players towards Skim, the Scott and Kim show weekly from the Frog Pants Network. Get live showtimes, the podcast, and more at frogpants.com slash skim. Mm. She apparently witnessed this headphone thing, so maybe we'll talk about it on uh, Sunday. Oh, really? Okay, so she saw it. She was out there waiting for her to make sure she got on, and then because it was so snowy, she didn't want to leave her destitute. Well, that's nice. Yeah, well, you know, she's she's a nice lady, Kim is. Um, all right, let's do <laughs> it's a lot of talk about mysterious mysterious packages of gold in the chat room. I've been through three dead. <laughs> I've been through four dead. Looking up the anus for a package of gold. Package of gold. Uh, we were talking about him yesterday on <laughs> DTNS because he had the remember he was doing some music service that was like supposed to be uh, Neil Young focused on like, hey, what if a music service focused on like purity of sound and hmm. very you know formats that were better than MP3s or ACCs and all that? And then I don't do you remember that at all? That. that wasn't that was obviously it wasn't part of Tidal, right? No, 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 it was his own thing. It was called Podal po- or something, Podal or something like that. JC Calhoun says Pano or Pono. Oh, Pono, that's it. Pono music. And so we were talking about it on DTNS. A name like Pono, how could it have not have survived? <laughs> Hardcore Pono. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he had uh, that went never happened. I don't know what happened because back Pono, in 2014 Pono they music. announced it. Huh. It was this huge deal. They had a Kickstarter. It was very successful. The website's now like a squat thing. Nobody's using it. Like I don't know what happened there. Well, what happened? Wow. Maybe they got in a fight. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, even PonoMusic.com, it is taking forever to load, so I don't think it's even a thing anymore. Wow, that's a bummer. I'm no longer part of that <laughs> thing. All right. Uh, let's get to the story here about... Uh, Keep on go- searching <laughs> for a package of gold, <laughs> and it's getting old. <laughs> the worst part would be is if you did all 19 before you got to the 20th where the gold was. <laughs> right, exactly. There's a chance. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, oh there's the player, the Pono player. That's right. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, BioCow just. It's the creative jukebox, really, like yellow. Oh, look at that. Oh, I forgot they had hardware for this. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. So, for those watching on YouTube, let me put this up here real quick. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, hold on a second. Why isn't that working? Ah, that's fantastic. That's <clears throat> yeah, just what you want for a podcast. There's lots of waiting around. There it is. All right, yeah, I remember for, this thing. For those of you listening, it looks like a Toblerone chocolate, about uh, yeah. four inches of a Toblerone chocolate bar with a screen and a plus and a minus button with a little circle button in the middle. I'm not going to call it the most ergonomic design, you know? It's a freaking no. triangle box in your pants. That's no good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a freaking triangle box in your pants. That's right. Nobody uses what? these chat room. This is not a thing I think no. you could buy now or use anymore. I mean, it's done. It was tied to that service, and that was it, I think. Right. Pretty sure you couldn't okay. just put your own stuff in Come there. on. It's even worse than the Zoom, people. Yeah. Oh, look. Uh, Heart of Gold is the number one track on that image that I'm looking at. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, oh, it totally is. <laughs> then Watermelon Man. It all Man, comes full circle. Blowing yeah. in the Wind, Born in the USA. Hmm. Mm. Surprised they didn't just stack it with multiple. Lee Greenwood. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's just sad because they announced it and then we were talking about DTNS that in 2014 it was this huge announcement and then just nothing happened. Just like nothing. I always think about that. Like so many tech things, so many partnerships, so many whatevers, they get announced and then just nothing happens. But none of us notice because there's too many to count. Yeah, so it just kind of right. comes and goes and it's it's fun to actually go back and look at that. And you still have your Zune, your brown Zune? I do. I oh, do. I'm, uh, I've got a frame. So I've got that. a frame with a picture box. I'm getting a, um, a speaker that's going to be pretty much constantly hooked up to. And then I've got a, a USB cable I've got sent over here for uh, basically going to constantly be, constantly be supplying it power. Hmm. So it's basically going to be a um, an always running, always playing uh, 70s tunes mm-hmm. for, for Star-Lord, for, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Quill. Yeah. 
Peter Quill. And uh, Peter Quill. And uh, all you have to do is walk over. You want to hear what's currently playing? You hit a little button, and the the speaker, uh, the volume comes on. Mm. And you can hear it. So my brain is in about twenty places today, and you just reminded me sure. because you said Peter Quill. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about uh, the 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 slightly tarnished star of uh, Chris Pratt currently? God, maybe you haven't followed this. Have you heard about? The I guess deal? I haven't followed it. What's going? What's well, going on apparently, with, uh, Chris so apparently, like, like uh, probably like a lot of people, he's he's super into his uh, his evangelical uh, church that he supports, and he spends mm-hmm. a lot of money there and donates a ton of it. And uh, they are, in particular, have sort of a deprogramming the gays kind of idea going on. Oh no, really? Yeah. So oh, while he's I not, know, I, I, don't I don't know that he's, that. I don't know that he's like outwardly that guy, but I, but you know, yeah. at the very least, he's got these ties, and so people are like, ah, Chris, you're falling so far from the tree. So I was just curious if that gave you oh. any pause or made you worry about him, or uh, it makes me sad, but. Uh... Uh, I guess he's one of those people we were talking about earlier with Bieber. I can I can separate the man from the performance. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, They're very I mean, anti-gay. It's one of those big uh, mega churches, like that one that you guys had in Colorado that got shut down. It's like a giant thousand-person uh, mega church. But if he comes out, if I hear him saying anything that kind of supports that, um, that hatred, negativity, negativity, bigotry. Mm-hmm. You know that sort of thing. Then, then I'm done. Then I'm. Then he's then on. You, the, then you're out. He's off the list. He's off the list. He's one of the Chris's we don't like right now. I'm, I'm never gonna watch another crappy Jurassic Park film ever. <laughs> I like Chris Hemsworth. I like Chris Pine, and I like Chris Evans a lot. You, those yeah. three, better not let me down. I need, I need Kirk. Actually, two Kirks, George and uh, James. Be good. Mm-hmm. And then also, uh, who's the third one? Chris, uh, oh, Evans, Captain America, keep it up, buddy. Right, right. Exactly. Nobody do anything bad, all right? Be nice. Right, right. We can always fall back on our other Christophers. Yes. Our other MCU Christophers. <laughs> yeah, this is actually true. Um, All right. Where are we now? What are we doing? Well, let's talk Vermont. Let's talk about Vermont, Scott. Uh, Vermont. Oh, yeah, here it is. Vermont town swears in a goat as a mayor. It's like a little kind of Ponxitani Phil sort of idea. You know, you bring a goat right, and he's like, right. ah, the new mayor is a goat. Ah, uh, it's a right in candidate. <laughs> ah, it's a goat. Ah. <laughs> Get it? He's the greatest of all time. That's the kind of goat we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, he immediately defecated as soon as he got right. to be mayor. Which yeah, that's what goats do. I feel like it's what mayors do. It's a perfect analogy. <laughs> For my first executive order. <laughs> my second. <laughs> Uh, the newly sworn in Vermont mayor is a goat. Uh, Lincoln, a three-year-old goat, was elected last week at Fairhaven, Vermont, uh, as part of their pet mayor with 13 votes, according to the Rutland Herald, following her swearing-in ceremony. Oh, it's a her. Uh, Lincoln's a her? That's a cool name for a girl, I guess. Lincoln? Sure. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the Nubian goat's first act in office raised some eyebrows. Lincoln couldn't wait to... Um, the, dude, they don't wait to go. Goats just go. Right. They couldn't wait. Yeah. yeah. Animals. Maybe your dog has been trained to like scratch at the door to say, I need to go now. Yeah. You know, all right, you're, you're, you're coming. Okay. I can wait. You're walking over here from the other side. Of the door. I'll wait that long. Yeah. <laughs> but not goats. They're just all pebbles immediately. Just blah, 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 blah. like it, I've oh, seen this yeah. a million times right. on Letterman. Like he'll have some uh, back in the day, he'd have like Jack Hanna on and Jack Hanna would bring out a goat of some sort. And immediately mm. the goat would poop everywhere. It's just the yeah. goat. It's goats. That's what goats do. Yeah. It's what goats do. Maybe don't have a goat as the mayor? I don't know. Anyway, the police chief grabbed a broom really quickly and cleaned things up, so everything's fine. <laughs> the chief of police is, is a lion or a... Uh... Yeah, he's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. You got all your your comp controller is like a weasel and uh... right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I had to take a look and see because you know my my dad lives in Vermont now. Yeah. My dad and stepmom live in Vermont. Yeah. And so I had to take a look and see how far Fairhaven was from um, Jericho, where my dad lives, and just uh, just south. Basically, Fairhaven is right on the border, the New York border, mm. and um, my dad lives. Uh, um, Several miles, well, quite a, quite a distance north from that, closer to the, um, almost to the Canadian border. Not quite, but almost to Canadian border. He could have gone north of Montpelier. Maybe he could have uh, witnessed the ceremony, the swearing in of the. He goat. could. I'm sure they did. I'm sure it's it's all the news is talking about out there. I be. should probably text him and say, "Hey, so how's that new goat mayor going for you guys?" <laughs> 
I mean, you know, it's a momentous occasion. We finally have what's a goat. Jericho gonna What's Jericho gonna do to top this one? Yeah, <laughs> gonna be hard. All right, well, he's that's a goat, a... but he's a capitalist. We believe in that. <laughs> well, yeah, Beto O'Rourke entered the uh, Democratic race yesterday. I saw that. Pretty yes. sure everyone's running now. All people yeah. are running. Yeah, You're... all people. Yep. <laughs> many, You're... many people. Many people. Running. All the, people. the best people. Yeah. Not the best people. I've been told. <laughs> They're the worst. Me. Worst people. Believe me, I know not the best people. <laughs> the 2020 is going to look... I hired not the best people. <laughs> you know what? The 2020 thing is going to look a lot like the flip of last time, because last time it was tons of Republicans in the primaries. Right, yes. And just yeah, a couple the, of uh, Democrats. It was the like... Republican debates was like an entire stage of about 50 people. Mm -hmm. You know, all... <laughs> yeah, no, this is what this is. This is the flip of that. This is just all Democrats and one incumbent, unless someone challenges him on his side, which I doubt is going to happen. Yeah. Should we run? Maybe we should run. Yeah. Sidian says, Beto <laughs> Sidian says Beto is not old and white enough for my taste. Nice, Sidian. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, we have a place here, a burrito place called Beto's. So that's what I think of every time his name is said. Makes and it's pronounced Beto's? It's not Beto's Burritos? Mm -hmm. It's Beto's. Beto's. Or Beto's. Yeah, it's like a perfect opportunity. It's Beto's Burritos. Well, they do a lot more than burritos, so I don't think they were thinking of oh, it. Oh, okay. All right. It's one of those places that's, you know, family run. Well, you called it a burrito place, Scott. <laughs> I, I did, yes. Whoops. <laughs> it's another one of those places that, that dares you to accept whatever's wrapped in that blanket of tortillas. <laughs> Trust it's us. going to be okay. Trust us. We put, we put food in here. Yeah. Be very careful. Uh, in the UK, there is a bed and breakfast where a cult teaches burping therapy to get rid of evil spirits. Mm. Hmm. It would be Burp like therapy. I want to be like this. Let's see. Here's what you do: you say, "Ah, oh, let it out, Mister." <laughs> oh, I feel so much better now that I've done that. How about you, the Hulk? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. How about this one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got a lot of these. Hold on. Yeah, I'm sure. You oh my! Oh, it's a Fletcher burp. <laughs> Hey, Christine, are you watching? Oh, my. That's your husband. Oh, Jeannie's muting us. <laughs> <laughs> this this was what pushed her over the yeah, edge? Yeah, this is what got her. Oh, man. Here's another one. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember doing that. Uh, I feel better already. This yeah. is great therapy. Well, anyway, this is a thing. A uh, socially harmful cult which has, been uh, which, uh, has taught burping therapy to get rid of evil spirits is reportedly holding sessions at a bed and breakfast in Somerset, England. Four-star mm. guest home, The Lighthouse in, F in Frome. Is that place? From? Frome. Frome? Frome. Probably Frome, right? You'd, uh, Frome, yeah, 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 definitely Frome. Um, let's see. A civil court in Australia. Oh, this is Australia. I'm sorry, not the UK. A civil court in Australia found universal medicine uh, makes false claims about healing in a defamation, defamation case. <laughs> defecation case. Last December, <laughs> uh, according to the Sydney Morning Herald. You ever been there? Right. Sydney Morning Herald. I've never been. I've never been to the newspaper in Australia. The oh. only newspaper outside of the U.S. I've been to is the Toronto Star. Oh, very nice. And by the way, the B and B is in the U.K. The article came from, or the 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 suit is happening. In court. Australia. The court is happening. Yeah, the civil court is happening in Australia. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. It found the cult founder Sergey Benhayan. Benhayan. Oh. Sarge. Sarge Benhayan. <laughs> Sarge. Uh, used Hello, bizarre forms Sarge. of... Would you like a lemon <laughs> twist in your cappuccino? <laughs> How could you not watch Perfect Strangers after your memorization of that guy? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you should be into it. Absolutely balky. Yeah. Sarge. Yeah. Didn't... What? I mean, he was surgeon. He was surgeon Beverly Hills Cop. That was where the Bronson Pinchot... Oh, yeah. Uh, Surge performance came from. But never forget the important... One of the greatest crossovers I've ever witnessed in television history, by far was the string of episodes of The Leftovers, season three, where she oh. she went and met with the other guy that isn't Balky. The other guy from Bronson, from uh, Perfect Strangers, Because yes. in, that, in that reality, Bronson Pinchot and the entire cast, crew, directors, producers, everybody <laughs> disappeared right. during the happening. Yes. And yes. he's the only one left, and he was like all freaked out about this, and, and said he crossed over or something. It was awesome. Such a great crossover. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Oh, my God. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I guess it's a crossover. It's not like it took place in the world of Perfect Strangers. No, 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 it no. It took no, place no. in a world where the TV show Perfect Strangers exists. Exactly. Exactly? Exactly. 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 <laughs> the greatest crossover to me is uh, Bob Newhart waking up at the end of the Newhart television show and realizing he's still living in the Bob Newhart show. Yeah, that was pretty good. 
I mean, uh, it's the same character, same actor, but Suzanne. I can't Plachette. think of a better. I can't think of a better crossover. I mean, you've got uh, Detective Munch who bounces around from every. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he'd be in all the cop shows. That's true. Uh, but yeah. th- in this case, it was just such a great like. Perfect Stranger is stupid. It's a dumb. It is. Sitcom. It was yes. It was a good one for them to choose. I mean, it was such a great show, regardless. But it was such an innocuous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> was c- cousin yeah. Larry was who the guy was. He was great. Right. Right. Anyway. If you guys never saw that, I loved that show. I loved, uh, what's it called now? <laughs> the Leftovers? Yeah, The Leftovers. I yes, love The Leftovers. Yes. Oh my gosh, I loved it. That's great. Carrie Coon, what a, what a revelation she turned out to be. Oh, she is. She's she's great. Yeah. She's dead now. And uh, the her MCU character is dead. It's too bad. Right. Yeah. Right. Proxima Midnight. Proxima Midnight. What a cool but name. Really, can you kill the, you can't kill the Black, uh, uh, Black Order. No. On, they're, they're. Come on, it's Thanos. Yeah. Oh, new Black Order. Yeah, oh, look, I could do that too. Yeah, just snap him back. Oh, that's the thing. Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Disco never existed. You know, huh? <laughs> How you like me now? You know what I'm worried about? Here's what I'm worried about after watching that new trailer today, and I've been thinking about yeah. this a lot. I'm worried sure. that they're going to have to resort to time travel to do anything, and I'm bugged about that. I don't want time travel in this. Mm-hmm. I'll be bummed if it's time mm-hmm. travel is your if answer. If they do it right. I mean, come on. How can know. they do it, though? You've, you've said yourself no one does it right. No, but they could do it. Uh, uh. <laughs> they're not going to do even it. Even saying that, it's like, no, because they're going to create a different eventuality, and they can't come back to their existing one with the things that they change in the other one because they're they're creating a new path, so they can only travel on their path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I they're know, all stuck yeah. in the soul stone. Is is the deal? That's the deal. They're I, all stuck in the soul stone. Um, they're gonna they're gonna go into the soul stone. Yeah, and get them out. Yeah, I want. Oh, I hate time travel though. The movies. Oof. We'll see yeah. what they do. Uh, all right. How about this Maybe story? Maybe the fact that it's comic booky stuff, I'll be forgiving because I, I forgave that whole cable mm. Nathan Summers business. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no. I, <laughs> I was all, I was all right with that in the X Men. Sure. Uh, let's see. We'll do another story here. Sure. Actors show different brain activity when they're in character. A new study finds. This okay. is interesting. Acting is the yeah. least mysterious of all crafts, says Marlon Brando. He once said that. But for scientists, working out what is going on in an actor's head has always been something of a puzzle. Now, researchers say thespians uh, show different patterns. I don't know why I emphasize that. Why did I do that? <laughs> because you wanted to make sure that nobody thought you said lesbian. Oh, probably, yeah. It was a <laughs> subliminal thing, but I, yeah, I think yes. you're right. Uh, thespians, a.k.a. actors, show different patterns of brain activity depending on whether they are in character or not. Dr. Stephen Brown, the first author of the research for McCaster University in Canada, said, quote, It looks like when you're acting, you are suppressing yourself, almost like the character is possessing you. Ooh. Uh, let's see. He said, Brown and, and colleagues report how 15 method actors, uh, mainly theater students, because, you know, you're not going to get Robert De Niro to sit down with you. Sure. We're trained to take on a Shakespeare role either, uh, role, either Romeo or Juliet, in a theater workshop, and were asked various questions, to which they responded in character. They were then invited into the laboratory where their brains were scanned in a series of experiments. Once inside the MRI scanner, the actors were asked to think about their response to a number of fresh uh, conundrums that flashed up on the screen, and which may well or might well have occurred uh, to the star-crossed lovers, such as, would they gate-crash a party? Would they tell their parents they had fallen in love, etc.? Anyway, they show that the brain patterns of actors when they are in character and thinking in character yeah, completely yeah. change to the point that they're almost like different people. I, you know, I believe that with the, especially the folks who go method, Daniel Day Lewis and, uh, um, uh, oh, shoot, uh, well, De Niro, you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, good for you, guy. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, uh, good for you. Uh, 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 What's his name all of a sudden? <laughs> Batman. It's freaking Batman. Bale. Bale. Uh, Christian Bale. Bale. Jeez Louise. Uh, like, I believe that they that it happens for them, but mm-hmm. um, I don't believe that it happens for Stephen Baldwin. Probably not. No. Or you and me. Hey, like, I'm in Stephen Baldwin's head. <laughs> There's a lot of room in here. Yeah. Let's, all right, let me go into character here. <laughs> He was so... Okay, now we're in Biodome. <laughs> oh, still, still nothing going on in here. Wait, was he in Biodome? I don't remember. Of course he was in Biodome. I don't remember. I don't think I saw Biodome. What? Nah, 
I never did. We should film Sackbat. Oh, Bat. that, yeah, uh, yeah, we should film Sackbat. Should we? Or shouldn't we? You know what? No, I think we should. I think we should. Okay. For the... Uh, for the for the sole reason that it's also got Kylie Minogue in it. <laughs> oh yeah, you're fa- you love her, so why not? I do love I do love Kylie Minogue. And I I will admit, fully, she could step in. Yeah. She could be the Australian Spice Girl that steps in for Victoria Beckham. Oh. And then I'm flying to Bristol to see the Spice Girls. Solve the problem right there. Yes. Right. I would. Okay, I'll admit to a. I had an unhealthy obsession with Polly Shore for a long time. <laughs> it ended right around wow, the time that is not where i expected that to go but okay go ahead <laughs> i liked him a lot and i think it all ended right around biodome but before that i loved it i couldn't wait for his next movie i loved encino man i loved all I, of that stupid I did stuff love encino man i loved his stupid take on all that i loved his weird thing he did on mtv i was a fan i liked him and now i don't know what i was thinking i don't think it's very good <laughs> I don't think it's very good at all. Yeah. Who are we going to look back at uh, in in 10 years, 15 years that we like today that we're like, wow, how did we like so-and-so? Oh, this is a really good question. I mean, it might be for the... for the <laughs> Chris Pratt. <laughs> well, maybe. But for like Generation Z people, it might end up being like the the ninjas of the world and the PewDiePies of the world and like not oh yeah that's yeah that's, that's not mainstream that's, stuff but that's becoming more mainstream so I guess it's as mainstream as anything but Guy Fieri are we gonna look back and say wow how did we ever listen to a guy who looks like that about food <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> but you know what I you know I, I rip on I feel bad when I rip on Guy Fieri because apparently by every single account and by even reports that we've even talked about on the show. He is the nicest guy in the world. Oh, yeah. Generous, nicest, stayed humble, like really wants to give back. Like that dude's yeah. the real deal. I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't rip on Guy Fieri anymore. Yeah. He's an extremely nice guy with oh, all Casey the right Calhoun. intentions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to say that one out loud, but that, that one we're, that one we're wondering about right now. Oh, that yeah. That one no, we no. wondered about yeah, at the that, time. That one I knew back in, I, well, let's put it this way. When I saw Home Alone 2, I knew it. I knew yeah. it then. F that guy. Right. People at home are like, who are you talking about? Oh, you'll know. Right, exactly. Uh, Final story. New Jersey cops catch an out-of-town panhandler, someone begging for money with a sign and everything. Turns out she had an iPhone 10, 500 bucks in her purse. Or no, a $500 purse, I'm sorry. And some jewelry. So it looks like she's faking it. Uh, she well, said she, she has no house. You can be homeless and still have a phone I don't know. and a purse. I don't know. This is kind of high end for this lady. She said she was <laughs> poor and needed money for diapers for her baby, but she was carrying a five hundred dollar purse with an iPhone ten and jewelry inside. Uh, now, <laughs> I hope she wasn't. I hope she wasn't carrying it around while she was asking for money, like carrying a Prada purse or a Coach, a really nice Coach purse. Let's see. It says. After his officer stopped her, the woman claimed to be Romanian, living in Queens, and was desperate. At one point, they confronted her over the thousands of dollars in merchandise she was carrying. So she must have been kind of obvious about carrying it. Mm-hmm. What a weird thing, man. I think there's a picture of her in here. Let's see if we can... Uh, oh, yeah, let's see. Let's get to the bottom of this, this story that's so important. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's her. Here you go, Chad. You can take a look at her. Oh, that's playing audio, isn't it? Turn it off. So there's two nice ladies at the local New Jersey uh, television hoo-ha. <laughs> that's right. Talking about their stuff, probably saying, a lady yesterday was found. Was, was, okay, there she is. Let's get her sign. I have one baby. Please. I have one baby. <laughs> yeah. Please help. Why not a baby? <laughs> I, I have, have one baby. I have one. <laughs> I have precisely one baby. I need exactly 100 diapers. <laughs> please, please, in the name of God, help me to buy baby stuff and diapers. Baby stuff and diapers? Baby I would say diapers are part of baby stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. When I say yeah. baby stuff, I include diapers in that. Right. Baby stuff. Uh, help me buy a baby stuff. Oh, is that the picture? Oreo flavor baby stuff. I just think if you've got... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound right somehow. Uh, the... Uh, what was I going to say? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you have all... If you got an expensive bag full of expensive things... Yeah. Your priorities are weird. If you're still homeless. Yeah, exactly. Maybe she's faking exactly. it. That's that's the point, I guess. Oh, look at this guy's collar and his sweater. Oh, hey, buddy. What's going on? All right. <laughs> Done looking at this dude. 
All right. Uh, there you go. Those are your stories. Let's take a break. When we come back, Wendy will be here. And we're going to take your Ask Wendy questions. That's right. I changed the hashtag for Wendy. When we do these hashtag things, it's going to be a, uh, hashtag Ask Wendy with an I. Wendy, oh, W-E-N-D-I. Well done. Yeah, yeah, so uh, it's just less confusing than we do with the Ask TMS on Friday. So uh, do that now if you haven't already. Just a quick tweet. A reply to our account or me or Brian individually, whatever you want, uh, or just a public one, but just use the hashtag Ask uh, Wendy. It was somebody's idea on Twitter to do that, and I, I'd love to give them credit, but it seems obvious now. So now that's why we're doing it. Um, anyway, Ask Wendy on Twitter, and uh, we'll have her answer your questions in real time right here on the show after the break, which consists of a song which Brian will now explain. Yes. So we're going to, uh, well, we're going to initially Canada. Um, and then the oceans of the world, and then to the UK. So, um, and I think he's he might be back in Australia. He's back in, or he's he's in Australia now. So uh, it's a guy named Ryan Valentine. Uh, started out in Canada, a singer songwriter. Really tried to find a way to make his mark. Ended up leaving home at 19 to become a um, a performer uh, on cruise ships, just to kind of get something going, to kind of make a name for himself and and uh, perform music get some practice performing music while he wrote his own. Then uh, he left that uh, gig, flew to San Diego, started working on his first EP with Jesse Barrera of My American Heart. He released that back in 2015 and started touring Australia, his new home. And uh, now he's getting ready to release his first LP, um, the first single of which is called Under a Spell. That's what we're going to hear right now. The LP is going to come out in... Um, uh let's see it's gonna come out in april and it's called evolution brand new single is called under a spell here is ryan valentine presenting 14 savory flavors to shake your craving for salt 14 herbs and spices so vegetables snap chicken sizzles no bitter taste of salt substitutes take a break america This is the morning stream. Welcome to day one of the end of the world. Well, that got a little dark there at the end. End of the world. Jeez. Welcome to the end of the world as we know it. Mm. Do we have any just, uh, anybody predicting like doom and gloom anymore? Like big catastrophic, uh, like uh, the the campings, the Herald campings of the world. Yeah, the no con the no con no, no. Currently, there's no uh, end of world watch. Okay. 2019. So all we're right. good. So all 2019 right. should be should be all right. All right. Well, I'm. I was like hearing that wacky stuff, and I just feel like there hasn't been a lot. Yeah. People are too distracted with real problems, I guess. <laughs> so exactly. Why bother making up crap when uh, the real problems are right in front of us? Yeah, if they're just happening. Um, all right, Hello. we're gonna. Oh wow, that was Hello. fast. Hi, Wendy. Hello. Well, why is it still ringing? I don't know. Is your phone still ringing? Can you hear that? Yeah. Answer all the phones, Wendy. No, I don't. I don't actually <laughs> hear it. Do you hear it? I don't hear it. Oh, I heard gosh. it in the background when she was talking. Is it still going? Yeah. Oh, well, that's no good. Nobody wants right, this in their life. Let me call you back. All right. <laughs> Yeah, hang up and just re uh, accept or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's going to. Do it over. <laughs> I don't know if she'll know how to do that. I may have to ring her. She won't know how to do that. Hold on. Okay. I'll hit ring. Wow, OG of little faith. Well, I just know my technically unsavvy family. <laughs> They're all a little whacked that way. Something sure. changed my freaking headphones again. Hold on. Oh, you know what it is? My right ear's ringing. That's weird. Hmm. My ratings, my right ear just started ringing for no reason. That's great. Like a phone ringing or just like a, a tinnitus kind Like of a thing? tinnitus thing, yeah. Is it tinnitus? How do you say that? It's both. Both are acceptable. According to the lady, Dr. Julie, who uh, appears on uh, on Channel 9 News every mm. once in a while, it's both tinnitus and tinnitus. Oh. All right. Well, then good. I won't worry about it. But I don't like that. I want it to be, I want it just to be tinnitus. But now she's like, well, tinnitus. Da -da -da -da, tinnitus, da -da -da, tinnitus. Yeah. So I was like, all right. So now I'm just saying tinnitus. Just say tinnitus. It's fine. When Wendy says, call me again. Oh, I did. She's okay. being, she's being called. But she's not answering. Okay. Where did she say that? In Discord, she said that. Oh. Oh, I don't see it in Discord. Weird. It's weird. I got the, the growl notification. <laughs> oh, but not. <laughs> but I don't see thing? it in our chat here. So how did she? Oh, she sent it directly to us in a. Oh, a separate thing. 
Yeah. Oh, oh there you are. Some, I hear it now. Hi, hi, Wendy. Yeah. Hi, hi. You know how the ring's like kind of pleasant, but yeah. then when it won't stop, it's kind of scary. Oh yeah, no, it's it's the end of the it's end times when that happens. I feel like the world's totally. ending. I totally get it. By the way, here's a theme for you. Cat and chicken porn. There we go. Welcome back to the show. My favorite it's, kind. Yeah, you bet. It's my uh, sister, Wendy, everybody. She comes on Thursdays, does a little therapy Thursday. She's an actual therapist. She helps people with real problems. And uh, don't worry about nepotism here. Wendy won't have any of that. She'll just kick me. <laughs> she'll kick me right in the butt. Doesn't nepotism, like, doesn't it actually help you? <laughs> um, it's just supposed kidding. to, right? Isn't that yeah. the idea? Like, if you're yeah. a nepotistic person, that means you give unfair advantage to family members it yeah which yeah well, i mean you're giving me a microphone but i'm also like telling you you're full of crap yeah exactly. exactly that's my point yeah. she she uh, she squishes any nepotism right out of the gate by kicking me in the nuts <laughs> or whatever she does uh well it's good to have you here um you uh we're having horrible snow today and it reminds me of you and your life in minnesota so <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, we're having misty, cloudy, creepy, good time to murder someone weather. So. Oh, oh, fantastic. Good. In the Midwest, yeah, yeah. that's a great mm. place for a murder. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the Coen brothers will do a movie about it. Yeah. They should. They really Why could. Here? Yeah, a lot of, you know, a lot of that series takes place right there in St. Paul. That's a great oh, movie. That's a great show, by the way. You should watch it. It's so okay. good. Oh. Anyway, uh, let's do this. Uh, today we're going to do like last week. We're going to do people's questions that have come in via a brand new hashtag. It's called Ask Wendy with an I. Oh and uh, <laughs> Wendy with an I, the Barbie lady. <laughs> my, <laughs> my favorite one is the most recent one from Sam Jane, who is also in the chat room. Uh, as a reference to earlier uh, conversation we had on the show about me not doing laundry while Kim was gone. She asks, how do we get guys to understand how to do laundry? Now, <laughs> it's obviously a very tongue-in-cheek, ha-ha, very funny kind of little poke at us, but I actually think it's just, there's a real question in there. Uh, I think a lot of, I, well, I can only speak for myself, but when Kim goes out of town, I am suddenly in full realization of all the many things that she does that I don't think about, and when she's not there and I have to think about them, it feels like chaos. So mm -hmm. any advice for people trying to better gear themselves for uh, being reliant on themselves when they are used to being reliant on somebody else. See, there's an actual question in there, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I would say start young. Mm. Train your boys mm. when they're little. Well, now we're really screwed. <laughs> yeah, now you got no chance. Um, I think you're modeled certain things, too, and I think that's that's going to be a, an interesting generational shift, too. I mean, I think of you know, what I saw our parents doing and what my kids see us doing are pretty different. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, like, <laughs> well, it was a long standing joke, but um, every time I load the dishwasher, Adam reloads it because I do it wrong, <laughs> 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 which has turned into a fantastic experience for me because all I, I mean, I'm never going to do it differently because it means I have half the work. So I just kind of throw stuff in and then he fixes it or I don't do it at all and let him do it. It's great. Mm. But I, I mean, our kids see very much equal, um, equal tasks and different things, but you do find yourself even like, you know, with our sort of equality egalitarian scenario, I'm just better at laundry. And I think it's because, um, well, okay, we're going to, stereotype a little bit here but i do think women generally and absolutely some men let's go with our 80 20 rule can keep a lot of things in their head at one time and so um there's a bit of like i gotta do this and this and this and all three things at the same time and while i'm doing that i'll throw a load of laundry in so it has to pop in your head so if your head doesn't have the capacity to have multiple things sort of playing at once yeah. I think that's tougher. So I think in most partnerships, you're going to have one who's pretty good at that, one who's not. Um, and like me with the dis the dishes, I am less and less capable as time goes on for because I'm trying to be. Mm. And I think maybe there are some dudes out there historically who have made themselves uh, obsolete on purpose. Like, well, I'm going to just put a red sock uh, in this white laundry. Right. Mm. And, Intentionally, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe. Mm. Or unconsciously or... My mom did this for me, so why do I have to? I think it's a, I mean, it's a major source of contention in relationships. So I think, I think that's, you know, back in the day when it was like, it's very clear, men, you do nothing, <laughs> women, you do everything. It was very clear who was going to do what. And I think as that's changed, 
um, there's a lot more re communication required. Yeah. So Scott, let's, let's take you guys for specifically, like Kim could do all of that in her sleep. So why would she then ask you to do it uh, and then it's like starting over with like a kid. Well, right? in the case, in this case, she spent two days at her sister um, Julie's house watching their five kids while they were out of town, and because right. she's too nice and should turn these things down, but she did it anyway. And so she went and did that, and we were just low on laundry and didn't know it really. And so while she was gone, it wasn't until today where she's back now that I was like, oh my gosh, what the frick? There's no towels, like. It's just a, it's ridiculous because normally it just happens because she's really good at making sure it happens. Plus all the billions of other things she gets done and goes and she's always running around. So I don't I don't even know when it really happens. It probably happens a lot of while I'm in here doing things, working. And so it just sort of happens. So in my case, which is why the whole conversation came up, I'm just sort of lousy at going, oh, all right, well, uh, while she's out, let's get a load on. You know, let's yeah. get this going because I just freaking forget about it. In the case of dishes... Kim and I have almost the same problem, except it's not how I load the dishwasher. It's how I put them away. I've got, I, I will, when, when I'm supposed to put them in cupboards and stuff and we're done with the dishwasher and I'm unloading it, I'll be like, oh, this pan looks like it goes here. And she's like, nope, doesn't go there. <laughs> like we'll, we'll argue for hours about where all the damn laundry or where all the, um, the dishes are that I put in the wrong places and the wrong cupboards and everything. And so, you know, right. it's just a matter of like, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And then when it's in sight and in mind, you're like, wait a minute, what do I do? Like, right, right. right. And in laundry in particular is its own beast, I think, because the the magic to laundry is to do it as you're doing other things. And if that is mm -hmm. not part of your normal routine, it really is a weird, it's like, okay, I guess now I do laundry as if it's an event, but laundry <laughs> is 100% all the time. Yeah. It never, especially with a lot of bodies and people sure yeah uh here's a good one from uh laid hain i think uh it says this was it difficult asking you specifically was it difficult living overseas in regards to living far away from extended family did you worry about emergencies happening and not being able to be there quickly uh that's a great question i actually wondered the I, same I thing of you while you were there because you know john and mom aren't getting any younger and i and i would have these thoughts once in a while of like oh my gosh what if mom fell down a flight of stairs but what would we I mean, we call Wendy immediately, but then what? Like, I, I would think about this weirdly um, because I, you know, I, ex I extend my stress to other people. That's how I do yeah, it. Yeah, it's funny because I think, well, I'll deal with that if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's that's a great question, and it's funny. I hadn't, I haven't thought about it in a while, but I, I, I had, you know, it crossed my mind. Like, um, how do I get on a plane that quick? It's still another twelve hours. Yeah. You know, like it's that's pretty tricky. And then what to do with the life and kids and stuff. I mean, I still have that now, but it's just a three hour flight, which is awesome. Mm. So it feels like, um, yeah, I'm just not a worrier though. Like mm. it just doesn't, it's not something that really bothered me. Mom, you know, like she wasn't feeling well or she had a thing or, you know, like I, I could talk to her and I could Skype her immediately. So none of that really felt, I, I mean, I think about that now back in the day when mm. like it would mean moving like to another planet because you could talk on the phone, but it would cost you a ton of money and mm. how different. Right. And so I could just like accidentally butt dial her with FaceTime and then we'd be face to face, you know? Mm. So it's, I think that probably kept those feelings at bay for the most part, but I kind of just didn't, I don't know. It didn't stress me out too much. I just figured I'd get on a plane and come home. Kim's also <laughs> very good at the, um, deal with it when it happens she's a big believer in being prepared for things but you know you don't stress about it until it's a thing and then you go to town and work on it i'm the opposite yeah. I, I worry about it worry about it worry about it and then when something actually does happen i'm actually okay in an emergency i've talked about this before i do really well my kids tell me the, this weekend or last weekend they told me that i'm scary in an emergency i said why it says you just become like a robot and you get everything done and I said, give me seems an example. Like a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a good thing. Carter cut her yeah. thumb off halfway. Uh, yeah, a week and a half ago. It's healing up very nicely, everybody, for anyone wondering. But um, she was cutting tomatoes, cut half of her oh, tip of her right, finger yeah. off. And I immediately go in. Kim's kind of like, oh, my gosh, blood, blood, blood. And she kind of freaks out. I'm like, all right, I know what to get. Let's go get this. Kim, grab that. All right, get some ice, get some water. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're going to call in if it's severed this far. Let me look at it close. I'm looking at it under a magnifying glass. Yeah, this is like nerve damage. Like I'm, I'm like a doctor in this scenario. Yeah. It's only before and after 
that I'm a giant puss bag. Then what happened after? <laughs> what happened after? Well, after I just kept checking on her going, is it okay? Oh, should we get stitches? Like I kept thinking about it hmm. too much that, that she was going to have permanent damage to her hand. And it turns out it was all unfounded fear. It all it's all healing. She's like a freaking one of those lizards that grows its head back or whatever. She's like that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, it worked out fine. But um, but yeah, like uh, I, I wish I was more of a in the moment emergency uh, worrier because I, I I worry about it until it happens. Oftentimes it never happens. And so, but worrying. it's that worry that prepares you. Like it's the the yeah. fact that you've been worrying about it. Like, all right, it's happening now. We're in. I'm doing this. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I think it's because it's fair. It's two totally different parts of your brain. Your brain activated. Yeah. So the worrying has nothing to do with actually the the stuff required to act in the moment. Right, and uh, it's it's funny because so. it's funny because Kim says this is changing for her a little bit with the with van with the grandbaby because yeah. she now thinks about him all the time and thinks about oh that dog's too big i don't want her getting sat on by that dog or mm. or, or thinking oh i haven't talked to taylor and there was some problem with the r- rocker it looked like it was you know it was gonna break like she's thinking about these things more now even more than she did when they were kids or little and that's been an interest, interesting twist because she looks at me and so she'll say, I don't know why I'm doing this. I go, what do you mean? She goes, I don't know why I'm worrying about stuff I can't control. I said, welcome to my planet, babe. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to yeah. planet stress out for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, I think Asia does not help with that. I think that. Asia or the, age? Did you say age? age? Okay, Asia. I was I was wondering age. if it was the band, the well, continent, or what? Asia, Asia doesn't help with that either. Really. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> especially They're the band. They're not telling us how to not worry when we get older either. Come on, Asia, step <laughs> they it up. Tell us to live in the heat of the moment. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping nice. you'd pull out a good Asia reference. Nice job. Nice. That was really good. Very good. Uh, somebody wrote in and uh, said this, and I'm just going to mention it because he's being a weenie, but uh, Jay Calhoun says... <laughs> Uh, there's a podcaster I listen to a lot, but he seems obsessed with butts and wieners. What does Wendy make of that? <laughs> I'm not obsessed. Yeah, I, I just... have actually wondered, Jay Calhoun, if my brother is stuck in the anal phase of development. <laughs> Whatever. Oral and anal. This is the and... sister who I will sit at Thanksgiving with and see who can burp the quietest and not get noticed by the adults. Uh, look, I've always, a, a good burp and fart make me laugh. It's just the way it is. And I'm not obsessed with wieners. I just say wiener a lot. Word wiener. <laughs> yeah, I like the word wiener. It's a funny word. So what? for me, it's all about what's funny. Uh, there, Jay Calhoun. Uh, all right, here's a real one. Um, uh, Where to go? I lost it. Hold on a second. Oh, there it is. Uh, suggestions for an introvert trying to succeed and climb the ladder in the corporate world. Oof. Yeah, mm. Good. Good question. Hmm. That's We're, tricky because we really value the pe- person who talks too much, unfortunately, I think mm-hmm. sometimes. Uh, yeah. Do you know what, though? I think, I mean, okay. That's, there's kind of a twofold question. One is how do I, how do I force myself to um, move up? And, you know, a corporate ladder requires some maybe schmoozing, some conversations, some friend making some contacts like that tend to come easier to an extrovert who's just gonna you know talking to a stranger or somebody might be easier right Mm -hmm. um so that's kind of maybe that's the question of like how do i force myself to talk more or is it that you you're under the illusion that extroverts get all the promotions for reasons of their extrovertedness Mm -hmm. or is there something else going on i don't know Mm. that's that's a good question. Yeah. Part of it is, you know, your own stuff. I think what's so fun about humans and so annoying is that we're so good at seeing someone else's garbage or someone else's, you know, good or bad characteristics, but it's really tough to have an, an accurate sense of our own, you know? Mm. Yeah. So if you're an introvert, um, you know, part of it is, it, I always say it's A-B testing. Spend one day as an extrovert and see what happens. <laughs> You know, fake it. Pretend you are happy to talk to that person or interested in the things they have to say or and you'll be exhausted by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Um, But then another idea is to sort of really look at what are the things you need to advance in your career and are there things you're not doing 
that you could be doing, that the energy better spent would be on improving some of that stuff rather than trying to be someone you're not. Mm. Because I think inauthenticity is really not the best route. However, you know, can we all be a little more emotionally intelligent? Sure. People sense that eventually, right? Like if they don't sense it right off the bat, if you're being you know dishonest or or disingenuous or whatever (laughs) it is Mm -hmm. uh they're gonna figure it out and people aren't dumb Mm -hmm. they're gonna know like they'll sense it or they'll find it later or they'll find it now or and you'll just be treading your your water you're not gonna get anywhere if you're doing that right authenticity is everything there's a bit of like um self stuff going on that maybe just is blocking you from progressing in your own abilities. So I, I think introvert, extrovert, it's an interesting construct to use to talk about stuff, but it also doesn't account for the the guy who can't handle awkward silence. Mm. It's like painful. So he's going to make a joke and he's going to be the life of the party to make sure everyone's having a good time. You know, underneath that, what is that? And then underneath the, the introvert, you know, is it social anxiety actually that we're dealing with? It's not simply... I just like to read on my own and I extend energy when I go to a party. Like there could be deeper issues. So, you know, I, I think the binary of extrovert introvert doesn't really cover it. So that's, that's why, you know, it's important to really look at your own uh, sort of set of stuff that you're bringing to the table. And then is there, you know, I, I think we're very, as humans, it's like, let's optimize, let's make ourselves a thousand times better, you know, like drink this and you'll be, I mean, we're such suckers for that crap. And I think partly because, um, in, in essence, I think what we do, though, is we work on a weakness. Mm. Oh, so I'm not very good at this thing. And we've done a couple studies on this. We, me and my people, people have done <laughs> studies on this. And you, you're so much, such a better use of your energy and time to accentuate your strengths rather than put all your energy into a weakness. And then some of things start shifting, right? So we can spend all of our time trying to not do this particular thing so we can fit in versus, okay, what are you really actually good at? And Mm. what, is there any underlying thing that's preventing you from maybe the skills that are required in your industry to move up the ladder? That's some solid advice. Uh, Real quick, the chat room says that uh, there's weird sounds coming out of us. It's not me. I think it's something on the PC. I'll fix it later. Uh, Wendy, here's one more for us uh, to finish this out today. I won't give a name. I can't eat in public places, and I don't know why. How can I change this? A desperate plea for for public eating. What do you What do you do there? Uh, Are they still around? Can they answer a question? Uh, Try ask it, and let's see if they'll answer me. Because this is actually coming to me as a private (laughs) message. Oh. oh, interesting. So what? Why? So why? Well, oh, you mean yeah. why is that a big deal? Why can't they? Well, no. Yeah, why we, can't they? And like, what yeah. keeps them from eating in public? Yeah. Oh, why? okay. Let me ask why. Are they afraid they of reply? people watching them eat, or is it the sound? Oh, they're replying. It... They're replying. Oh, good. Good. Okay. good. Uh, here we go. Okay, here it is. It is just too loud and crowded for me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, yeah. you can go. Uh, you can go to places that are less loud and crowded. I guess. Well, okay, so there's a couple things. Uh, my first hunch when they said that was it had to do with noise. Yeah. And it was either you feeling that misophonia. Remember we talked about that where oh, you watch right. or hear somebody eat and you want to murder them? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's one reason you, you wouldn't want to eat in public. I mean, I've, I've had clients who have to eat in separate rooms from their family for years because yeah. they can't be around other people eating. So maybe there's that. Or in this case, it sounds like it's a stimulus overload. Mm. Um too loud, too many people, too crowded. It feels like you're all going to the trough to eat maybe. Mm-hmm. And it's just not your jam and it's too much. And here's the thing. That's okay. So work with where you are, which is, you don't like it. What do you like? Where is a place that, have you ever found some place that you like that feels like it has the right? I mean, one reason this person is not wrong about restaurants, in fact, they are the decibels in restaurants today, especially America. Holy cow! Are oh, yeah. So high, and the reason is everyone wants their industrial design warehouse interior, and there's zero. <laughs> no sound absorption. No sound absorption, and there's zero of those. Remember those tiles that they're so ugly. I get it, but they used to absorb sound. Yeah. So yeah. it is so loud. I've been to a few restaurants here that I feel like. I feel like I was at a concert after I've left. It was that loud. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Hmm. So 
legit, there's not a lot of, you know, fun hip restaurants ever you're going to go to where it's going to be quiet. But ask yourself this question, where are you comfortable eating? And how public is too public? Like I can tell you right now, if you go to Salt Lake, there's a restaurant called Forage. It's going to cost you $3 million, but <laughs> Sounds you, great. you eat for over, I think it takes you four hours to do the whole meal. It is so peaceful and quiet and delicious. And so I've, I've never been that calm in a restaurant in my life. Granted, I had four hours to sit there. Are you, are are you cor- having to dig through nuts and berries on the ground uh, to eat? Because <laughs> no. not like forage. <laughs> oh, like the real foraging, yeah. Well, no, wait, it, like, it, no, it, 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 come, it, it comes it, in like, uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, multi-courses, is that the thing? Yeah, oh, it's like, mm. and each bite is like gastronomy, whatever, right? I don't know the mm-hmm. words, but you eat... I can still, I can name things I ate that night and this was like 10 years ago. It's mm. so good. Anyway, uh-huh. but like, where is a place where you've actually experienced this thing and then see how we can maybe replicate it. So if you're only heading towards an Olive Garden and a, a Applebee's or a Chili's, you're going to have the exact same noise level sound yeah. environment, right? right? So there are plenty of places to go. And maybe you start with, you go get takeout from a place and you're just kind of hanging out a little longer while you're picking up the takeout. You just kind of, slowly expose yourself but but also don't expect to want to like loud crowded places Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and and it sounds my guess is there's maybe some impact on your social life and that that's got to be pretty frustrating yeah i uh i can only imagine i you know that it's funny you brought all that up the sensory deprivation thing really there's something to that um when we went last year uh brian and i and a group of people did that vegas um blackout eating thing whatever it was called brian yeah yeah uh that was a similar experience for me i expected to be kind of stressed out in there because it was pitch black no light Mm -hmm. all you had is the sound of people around you the waiter had like um sam fisher headset thing night vision thing on (laughs) Uh, so so he could see so he's walking around with his with his infrared but the rest of us are just sort of there and the the courses would come and you were kind of told where to reach out and touch your forks and all that and I was so chill in there. Like, mm-hmm. it just chilled me out. I was so relaxed. And it really got me to thinking, why? Why was I so relaxed in that environment? And I think it was just because sight was off the menu. <laughs> like, you just don't mm-hmm. get to see. Yeah. And you're also kind of giving yourself up to trusting this place. Like, talk about trusting what food's in front of you. Like, yeah. you literally can't see it. And and it was just down to talking to people and that was the you know that was the, all the interaction you had to make it wasn't body language it was none of that and it was awesome like i loved mm-hmm. it it was great i need more of that in my life without yeah. it costing 190 dollars to do it <laughs> <laughs> well and one thing too like as a, just a rule for i mean sort of average folks go into a restaurant and they're not thinking about this they're not experiencing the same level of um irritation mm-hmm. or just feels off or it's, you know, and I think you you have more flexibility when you're younger because it's, it, it creates excitement. I think as people age, you know, the grumpy old man, there's a reason is that the sensory stuff and the loudness and the chaos and the bad feng shui or whatever can just feel it's, it's frustrating. So you're not enjoying your evening. So a lot of folks will, you know, you pick the restaurant that you really like, you find a seat that feels comfortable. Some people that's their back to the wall, other people are back to crowds, you know. Wow, okay, so. Various reasons. It, it's funny you bring that up, that that's a thing that, that uh, Tina knows about me. So when we go into a restaurant, she knows to always let me have the seat that lets me face the door. Mm. Okay. Like it's a weird thing. Like I always feel like I, 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 I need to, I can't have my back to where people are coming in for whatever reason. Mm, that's interesting. Well, you're, you're yeah. a bit of a sheep dog, not a sheep. Mm. Yeah. Like, that's I, always been I told about. To know, where's the exit? <laughs> How do I get everyone yeah. out? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, Kim Kim does similar things with me with other stuff. Like she knows that I want the aisle of a plane every time. I mean, that's a good example sure. of where this happens. Um, mm-hmm. And I cannot stand being mushed in there by the window. Oh, my gosh. I want to scream and jump and run. I hate it so bad. Okay. So you, you need to get to the bathroom. But also, the <laughs> <laughs> I think the restaurant thing, too. I, I have a good friend who has ADD. And he, um, whenever we've gone to restaurants, he'll just like ask us switch seats with somebody or do whatever. And one time I'm like, how come you never just sit down like the rest of us? And he goes, oh, because if I am visual, so he has to have his back to the door 
and his vision only facing the people he's with, or he will just, his eyeballs will be everywhere and really so distracted. So it's and a distraction thing. That's totally. interesting. So he minimizes his distraction by doing certain things, right? So we're all weird, everybody. We're all weird. But, yeah. you know, finding, especially this sort of reduction in what you can do, that, that's got to be frustrating. So figure it out. Find the place that is your jam and... You know, and then go there all the time. Watched an episode, or listen to an episode of Reply, Reply All. Um, it's a podcast on Gimlet that's awesome. Um, but anyway, they had a whole thing about gir teenage girls, this phenomenon where a certain number of teenage girls, and they're almost always white, and they're almost always middle class to, to, to hire, uh, have this weird thing where they are suddenly just, everything hurts. Pain, sound just all their sensory stuff is on fire and they go through this like rigorous treatment to try to desensitize from it or whatever. And they, and, and the, the interesting thing about the show was all these reasons that people think that they are having it, that there's these crazy expectations on them, that that is too much for a, a 14 year old uh, to handle in, in modern society and their parents are too high expectations. But all of that aside, the, the main thing was they were just overwhelmed with sensory information i have an autistic nephew who's like this he goes to a, a restaurant and he'll lose it because yeah. it's just mm. too much like just too, too intense much input, too much sensory yeah, too much sound sense. and so what you're talking about just sounds like variations on that or you know there's yeah. levels and of we're that. all essentially on have varying levels of this autism is shows a like the really stark it's as if all of us were stripped of our ability to mute the sensory input that's we would be at that spot you know mm -hmm. and so we're all in variations of that i think and you know and something i've noticed recently is a lot of um you know kids younger kids older teenagers will have on um this is they're clearly struggling with other things it's not just i think sensory but they have these big headphones on it just dulls the sound mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. then they're fine yeah. they're fine where they are they're fine in this group or they're fine in the mm -hmm. you know whatever and i think you know maybe maybe smaller ear stuff will come out and probably already exists i don't know um yeah. but that would be an interesting you know i've wondered that if you wore headphones into a restaurant what what would your experience be then but some of it might be just experimenting a little playing around like mm -hmm. trying to figure out what works for you as opposed to nothing works for me and i'm going to stay home mm -hmm. i mean that that's a safe choice but it's there's prices to be paid for that right mm -hmm. um so maybe find a friend who's like Hey, will you do some restaurant exploration with me? Yeah. And let's find a place that like so on a Friday when I want to go out to eat, I don't have to debate whether I can be comfortable at all that there are some options out there. And they they really there are typically, I don't know where you live and there may may not be as many in certain areas, but there's a lot of places you could maybe find that. Yeah, yeah you could experiment. It'd be fun to experiment because you might go into an olive garden garden and learn that the thing you hate is the constant rumble of people talking. Versus the Mexican place you go to, and there's nobody there, but the music is going bah, 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 like really loud <laughs> in your ears, and that's cool because you like that festive whatever. It's and so you go, oh, you know what it is? It's just too many people mumbling, or you know, like just experiment, right? Play around. Like I went to a, yeah. a high school dance. Yeah. Not me personally, but I went to drop off a child, and then there was a car complication thing, so there was no ride later. So I'm like, I have to stay here. Okay. So I sat down and I watched the most painful, <laughs> social, awkward group <laughs> jumping, everyone wearing fluorescent, like it was an 80s thing. And I kept thinking, I, I don't get how they think this is cool. I remember dressing up like it was the 70s when I was a kid. Okay. All right. All right. It's my turn. I get it. Okay. Yeah. But it was just amazing. But I left with the worst headache and <laughs> zero appetite to ever be around anyone who's 17 ever again. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's my, not my place. I've decided that my jam is not. It's more like a four-hour dinner at a place called Forage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds all right. I would try that Forage place. That seems, That's awesome. Seems you should cool. go. It's like it's like an old garage. Um, Where is this? In Salt Lake. It's in Salt Lake. Oh, um, oh. It's on For some reason, I thought it was in Minnesota. I did, too. No, no. Ninth and ninth area ish, maybe further west from that, Scott. But it's like it's a wait, former, wait, wait. Is, like, it, is it ninth and ninth with ninth north or ninth west? It's ninth east and ninth south. 
Uh, Jamie or uh, uh, Jeannie reminds me in the chat room that every time I do the burr, 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 burr song, it's a it's a reminder that I used to do that in public and annoy my kids and oh, make them right, embarrassed right. because we'd see like a Spanish way or a Spanish Hispanic looking somebody and I'd go. It's a while ago. It's a while ago. When it's a restaurant, it's not racist. Plus, it also sounds like it's the Queen of England singing it. <laughs> anyway, uh, this has nice. all been good. I, uh, this is fun to do once in a while. Uh, who knows what we'll do next week, but it's uh, always good to have Wendy on. Hey, we should remind people to still go to that website, double down yeah. on this. Yeah, gominivan.com. I was just looking at it before we started, and there's a ton of review guys, reviews you guys have done. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, people yeah. have been um, um, pretty hunky-dory about helping them out. When you give us homework, we do we it. do mm-hmm. it. I yeah. know, right? Yeah. Okay, well... I'll get. I'll come up with some other ones. Someone from Hawaii. I'd like to go there. Why uh, wouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, is that homework stuff. now? <laughs> yeah. Get me to Hawaii. <laughs> Just go to that website, gominivan.com. Click on the ready thing. Take the little survey thing and, and just be tracked. Yeah. It's not. They're not taking any crazy personal information at all. Oh, like, trust me, no. Yeah. And she's super cool and yeah. just. She just wants to get going, and you know, sometimes you just need people writing stuff for you to get going. And, yeah. Need a little boost. We're happy to boost yeah. people, and we like She's boosting. She's the coolest. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do that. Wendy Dunford on uh, Instagram, if you want to follow her there. Although I guess. Hey, by the way. Yeah. I went to Twitter because I never do, and I realized like uh, a bunch of you have sent stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. All the time. They they what send. What is wrong you. with me? Why can't I get like my brain to go? That's a thing. I don't know why. Anyway, so I apologize, everyone. I love you. Yeah. I've written back to a few of you like, hey, I know it's a year and. 300 years ago but <laughs> you still have a question a year and 300 so, years ago that was a long time ago it's, it's almost like uh, that's almost 301 years ago <laughs> 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 wow uh all right well yeah do that and uh wendy may reply to you uh, next year on twitter yeah so. next christmas i'll yeah, give you check that a out ring-a-ding. have mm-hmm. fun we'll see you later bye all right that was good nice. always fun hanging with wendy um not much else today other than to say uh, it's technically the end of our broadcast week, but not really, because we do a PM edition on Fridays. Right. We do that because you guys support us at patreon.com slash TMS, so it's as good a time any, as any to recommend uh, checking that out. There's other benefits and bonuses to supporting us over there, so please do, patreon.com slash TMS. And for everything else you may be trying to track down, ways to contact us, uh, our phone number for voicemails, all that stuff, head on over to frogpants.com slash TMS. Brian Ibbett, please take yes, us out musically, please. Well, okay. Malia wrote in and said, mm. I want to request a song to dedicate to my husband, Tom. Uh, March 14th is our wedding anniversary. This is our fourth anniversary. Yes, we intentionally got married on 3 14 15 because of Pi. Wow. Uh, I love it. You nerds, you're so awesome. Yeah. I know the last four years haven't been the easiest, but through it all, he's been amazing and supportive. I'm so grateful for him, and I love him bunches. Thanks. You know, we do get um, uh, emails, a lot of emails from people who are doing wedding anniversaries, and, and they'll always say something like, I know this hasn't been a very easy year for us, and da-da-da. Mm-hmm. You know what? It is every marriage has uh, oh, these yeah. rough patches, and it's completely common. So uh, know that if you're going through that, you're not the only one, and you'll get through it, and it's it's natural, and it's all part of marriage. There's my, there's my therapy Thursday. Look at that. I can oh, do it, too. Thanks, ah! man. That was awesome. Well done. Yeah. Um, so, uh, going out to Tom and Malia, she wanted a cover of Kryptonite. I've got a cover of Kryptonite. This is Cornbread Red, who we love. They, uh, they're one of the bands that always contributes to that Picking On series, along with, um, Iron Horse, mm. I believe is the other one, but mm. Cornbread Red is great. And who doesn't want a little Three Doors Down Bluegrass style in their life? Mm. So, um... Let's I hear it. I know what I right want. I think that sounds great. I love all that yes. stuff. In fact, I think yeah, you're I, the guy that introduced me to that picking on thing back in the day. Yes, it's it's uh, it's the best. And I wish that so often the bands that do those picking on series wouldn't just get lumped into the performed by picking on series. Like they don't get album cover uh, recognition by name. They're they're just called the picking on series. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh no, I want to know Cornbread Red, Iron Horse. I want to know who else is doing this. I agree. So this happens to be Cornbread Red, and it is Kryptonite, and it's originally Three Doors Down. It's going out to Tom and Malia. All right, have a fantastic day, everybody. We'll see you. Oh, uh, Current Geek got pushed to tonight, so tonight Current Geek with me and Tom, 
And cool. uh, noon, I'll be doing the f final stretch of Outlast 2. So come watch Ooh. that. Ah! Uh, <laughs> that's the preview. Uh, that's what it's going to sound like. <laughs> yeah, it'll sound just like that. Have fun. Eat in the dark. We'll see you soon. <laughs> this show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. <laughs> that was for you, Genie. <laughs> yeah, I did no time to mute. Ah!